Hello everyone and welcome to the Earth Tones Girl channel. My name is Denise and this is episode 80. I have got a new to me technique, knitting technique to share with you that I am beyond excited about. Uh, I have finished two more audiobooks this month and I have a sock cowl idea that I want to put to you all and see what you think. Maybe maybe a new sock cowl for end of winter, beginning of spring, but we'll get to that in just a second. So you guys, I, my last episode was January 14th and that was the first one for the year. And once again, man plans and God laughs. I had every intention of being back here with you guys. And honestly, I feel like the last two weeks of January just kicked my butt. <laughs> they really did. So today is February 1st. Um, happy February, everybody. Uh, it is Thursday, February 1st. I am so happy to finally be back here with you all. Um, I don't know what happened to the end of January. Right after my last episode, I just came down with something and was not feeling well at all. Um, I shouldn't say come down, came down with something, but I just had some stuff going on and I just really was not feeling well at all. And then my son wasn't feeling well um, and he was home from school. And then my daughter most recently wasn't feeling well. And it's just, then I got then there was just some emotional stuff going on with with a friend and it was just so I just felt tired and beat up <laughs> by the end of this of the end of January I just it started off great and then blah, blah, toward the end but anyway I am back and I have been knitting a lot that said all of that said even though it wasn't pleasant there was still a lot of knitting going on and I have an FO to share with you. I have this technique that I can't wait to share with you. So um, yeah, let's, let's just, let's jump right in. <laughs> I also want to say a really, really big thank you. You know that gratitude is a huge part of my life. It's a huge part of my personal life. It's a huge part of my life here on the channel. And I don't think that you can ever say thank you enough. And I just want to thank all of you because this channel, my humble little channel, just hit a huge milestone. Earth, The Earth Tones Girl channel has just hit 40,000 subscribers. I cry easily. And while it is just a number, and my focus is always on connection and people and talking talking to people, uh, whether that's in person or here in the comments on the channel, that is what really lights me up. And being here to teach and tutorials, that's what lights me up. But there is also a really sweet, and I'd be lying if I said there wasn't, there's a really sweet joy, um, sense of accomplishment when you hit a milestone like that. So I just really want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and who follows along here with me. There've been quite a few new subscribers lately. So I want to welcome you all to this space, to this channel, um, into my little earthy world. You are all so welcome and I'm so happy that you're here. <sighs> It's just, it's, it's great. I also hit a bit of a milestone on Instagram. Um, again, it's not the numbers. It's about feeling that people are excited about what you have to say and what you have, what I have to say and what I have to share. And that's what's really, really big for me. So I just really want to say thank you so much to everyone. Yay. Um, really, really big yay. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really, really excited. And now a coughing fit's coming. Oh, wait, let's pause for a second. <laughs> Sorry about that, guy. <laughs> I think in my excitement, uh, I just uh, started swallowing and getting all excited. Anyway, uh, I'm fine. Everything's fine. So let's talk about this new technique, guys. This started, I first discovered helical knitting 
um, my gosh, way back before like YouTube was a thing. I mean, I knew of YouTube back then. I don't even, but I never had a channel. I didn't know how to access it. I, it just being social media wasn't what it was like 18 years ago. So back then I used to read blogs. I read knitting blogs all the time. Yes. B L O G. <laughs> uh, some of you may not even know what those are, but, um, People would write and keep these logs and and um, of what was going on in their lives, and it was just it was all words and pictures, basically. And there was a blogger named Grumparina. I don't remember her real name. Something in my head wants to say Laura, but <clears throat> excuse me, I could be totally wrong. If anybody remembers her name, please please put it in the comments for me. I even went to her Instagram account, but I couldn't. Her first name is not on her profile page. So anyway, her name is, she is still currently um, active and she is on Instagram. Her name is Grumparina and I will link to her down below. And she was the first person, maker, crafter, knitter that I had ever heard talk about this technique. And basically it's, it's called helical knitting. And when you are knitting, People think that when you're knitting in the round that you are knitting a circle. You're actually not. You're knitting a spiral. So you start at one spot and your colors are stacking on themselves. Okay, whatever you're knitting, the stitches are all stacking on themselves. The technique she talked about in relation to knitting was helical knitting with two colors. So you basically have one color and to avoid the jog, if you, there's a certain particular, there's a particular way that you knit the stitches so that they stack on each other like this. So you basically have parallel spirals. That's the best way I can think to describe this. So I saw this many moons ago, many, many years ago and thought, wow. And she Loved the look of it, but didn't enjoy knitting it. So I remember her collaborating with Lorna's Laces. Yes, that this is how far back I'm going. She collaborated with Lorna's Laces, um, which is now discontinued, unfortunately. It was beautiful, beautiful sock yarn and just yarn in general. And they created this custom colorway. It, it, the name of the colorway was Grumperina. And it, I think, I, if I remember correctly, I think I even have a skein of it downstairs. That's how old my stash is. And it's a purple purplish bluish color that spirals with white and never knit with it thought okay that looks interesting um never really pursued it let's fast forward to I don't know maybe last year and Jen Yard who is everything shapes us on Instagram posted a picture of a helical sock that she knit and I thought, what is that? That I have to learn how to do. And, you know, life gets in the way. You're doing other things. I'm knitting other things, doing other things. And for some reason, it popped up again. She, she posted something else or somewhere, somehow, somebody posted. And I decided to go down the rabbit hole. Now, for those of you that know me personally, um, I don't like to just jump into something. I will study, 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 study and research and watch videos and talk to people and read books and tutorials. I, I really want to understand how something works, whether that's a knitting technique or even as I've talked about in the past, my new camera, um, takes me a really long time to actually do the thing because I spend so much time learning about it. That said, I watched about I don't know, honestly, probably close to 10, maybe even 12 video tutorials right here on YouTube to learn this technique. And for the most part, they were all the same. One or two were a little bit different, but okay, so you're all like, shut up and just show us the technique, right? <laughs> here it is. May I introduce you to helical knitting? I'm gonna let this focus. It's trying to find, there we go. Look at, that. So basically, I'm going to turn this. There are no jogs in the color. There's no jogs in these stripes at all. Isn't that absolutely amazing? 
and I'm going to show you the actual starting point where you can really see where the spiral starts. It's right there. Now, I'm sure there is a way to get rid of that jog. We'll talk about that later. So here is my sock, you guys. This is my first attempt at helical knitting. And I can't even begin to tell you how in love I am. Now, I posted this on Instagram and people were so excited. When's the tutorial coming? Oh my gosh, gotta try that. That's on my bucket list. I'm so excited and I'm just beyond excited. That said, I will do a tutorial at some point because I love this technique so much, but I am not good at it yet and want to perfect a couple of things. I really want to get an even better rhythm with the changing of color. And I'm gonna show you, um, I'll talk, I'm gonna show you an actual like overhead shot so you can see what it looks like. Cause it, this view is not gonna do it justice. So I really, really wanna get better at this and also get better at the heel. Now, I watched a t tutorial on how to position your colors so that you can work a heel flap and gusset. That is not always my go-to. And I looked and looked and looked, and it was crystal clear. I understood exactly what she did. But I kept going down the rabbit hole looking for a tutorial for a short row heel, and I couldn't find one. Maybe there is one out there. If you all know of one, please, please let me know in the comments. But I couldn't find one. So I took the theory from the heel flap and gusset tutorial and applied that here. So as you can see, that is what the heel looks like. Okay, that's one side. Now, I'm gonna show you the other side that's a little bit gappy. Now, is there a way to tighten those stitches? Yes, here's the other side. So if you can see in here pretty clearly, the colors are, there's a, not the colors, the stitches are a little bit large in here. There is a way to tighten that, and now that I've already started the second sock, I think in theory I know what to do, but I really want to perfect that before I do a tutorial, because I just think that's the right thing to do. <laughs> um, I'm so excited about this. The possibilities are just endless. Now, this particular yarn that I'm using here is, um, this is the gray, is Gray Gardens, by Legacy Fiber Arts, and the white, or it's actually more of a cream color, is Vanilla Bean, also by Legacy Fiber Arts. And I just helically knit them. <laughs> and it's really funny, I have to tell you a joke. I, I When I posted and talked about this, um, I did a little uh, reel, like a little, I did it in my stories, and put the captions on. And on Instagram, you can add caption so that people can read as you're speaking. And I said helical knitting and the captions captured it as biblical knitting, <laughs> which I thought was pretty hilarious. Um, it did feel epic. I wouldn't say biblical, biblical, but it definitely felt epic to me. So yeah, so I've started the second sock. Um, I've actually started two pairs, two more socks after that. So here is um, my first attempt. Here's my second attempt, or my second sock. I decided to invert the stripes. And it's so interesting, while this portion, the actual leg of the sock does look the same, there's just something about it. It looks so much softer with the white cuff. So I will be knitting, so here's my second, as you can see, and I will be knitting this one in the quote unquote in the reverse. And I just, I love it so much. So as you can see my colors now, hold on, let me see if I can show you. When you're helically knitting, so here is my gray color. Whoop. Here's my gray color on this side. And here is the white. Let's see if that'll focus on this side. So I'm gonna try to do it this way so you can see. They are in different positions, very different positions, but the way that you knit around, you catch up with the colors, so you sort of bump into the colors and pick up the next and keep going. So again, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do a little demo on um, how that works in just a sec. So, 
one, two. Then someone in the comments on Instagram said, oh, I wonder how that would look or have you ever tried it or would you consider trying it with self-striping yarn? Okay, I'll take the bait. <laughs> self-striping yarn, oh my gosh. So what did I do? Of course I cast on another one. <laughs> Here we go. And this is what it looks like in self-striping yarn, you guys. Now this little jog that you see right there, that is actually in the color. That's in the yarn itself where it transitions from from this sort of um, maroon color over to the yellow. But this is what it would look like. This is one full repeat of the colorway. And this is, let me grab the ball. Sorry to be so close to the camera. Here we go. So here is my, here's my white. This is just opal. It's just an opal, um, it's opal yarn in a solid. I think this is natural, the natural colorway. And this is the, there it is. That is the self-striping. Isn't that beautiful? This is called, it's from the Alta or Alma collection. This particular colorway is called Harmony and it is by Valkyrie Fibers. And I will link to her down below. She does a lot of um, book themed and anime movie themed colorways. And I believe that this is an anime or manga colorway. So yeah, but I just, I don't know of the, um, I don't know the manga or anime that it's based on, but I just fell in love with the colors. So there you go. So this is a full repeat. Sorry, there we go. This is one full repeat of the colorway. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the beginning. So there's eight. Uh, if you can see the orange starts to change over to kind of a gold color right down in here. You guys, I am absolutely positively hooked on this. It is magical to knit. Um, why don't we pause and I will show you how it's done. <laughs> So here is a much better point of view of the sock and this technique, okay? So right now, I am sort of at the beginning of my round, all right? And the beginning of my round is when my working yarn and the tail, the cast on edge are on the same side, all right? Now here is, this is again, not a tutorial. It's not a tutorial. I just want to show you with a slightly better vantage point, what this type of knitting looks like in real time, okay? So as you can see, I cast on with the new color. My main color here is, and I realized I snagged that a little bit, I dropped half of a stitch, but, so I cast on the white, the cuff is in white, and I started the, if I give this a pull, that'll close that gap. I started with the gray right here. So as you can see, there is a distinct jog, but that is the beginning of the spiral in there, okay? So I am now going to start knitting. And what I do is I keep the other color. As you can see, this is where they're going to meet up. Now the technique that I'm using calls for slipping the lat, just before you get to the end of the color, you're going to slip the last three stitches, okay? And then continue on. So it'll make a lot more sense once I start. And as always, if you've been watching my tutorials, I like to do things in real time. And it doesn't matter, the technique doesn't matter. I happen to be knitting on two circulars, but it really does not matter. Two circulars, magic loop, nine inch needle, DPNs, it really does not matter what method you're using to knit your socks. So I'm just coming across, and I don't know why that keeps getting stuck on my finger there. So I'm just knitting across here. And again, the whole point of this is to stack my colors in that spiral. So now I am three stitches. I've been knitting with the white into the gray. I am now coming back up on my gray, which I need in order to continue knitting over the white. So I'm going to slip, drop the white, I'm done with that now. I'm going to slip as if to purl the three gray stitches, go into that white stitch, 
Give that a gentle tug and it's really not a hard tug. It is the super, super gentle tug. And all I'm doing there is evening, sorry guys, evening out my tension, okay? And I'm just going to start with the gray color. And I'm going to knit across. I'll do this in real time for you so you can really get the sense. A lot of the videos that I watched just sped up to the end of the round and then they turned around. I like to be a lot more thorough with my demonstrations and tutorials. I think it's a little bit more helpful for people to understand the technique. Okay, so I'm to the end. All right, my white is here right where I ended. And now I'm going to turn the way I normally would. Again, this is not a tutorial on this technique specifically. I'm just showing you how this works. So that's gonna stay over there. I'm going to grab my gray yarn. Now, as you can see, they're twisted. So you can leave it that way. They're not twisted. One is just over the other. I, You can move the two skeins, or if I have this in a bag, I'll just give the bag a little twist. It really doesn't matter because it's not going to truly get tangled. And then I just continue. I mean, if you keep overlapping the yarn in your bag, you will get a bit of a tangle, but it's easy enough to just untangle the yarn just by switching them. So anyway, I'm knitting now with the gray into the white, <clears throat> and this is my gray spiral. And I'm going to come across. Okay, pull off a little more. And when I come around again, Okay, I turn, and there is my white waiting for me. So this is what happens. Now, if you notice what happens with this technique of slipping, we knit, right. knitting usually is right to left. So as you are working these spirals, you're going this way, as you're working the spirals, the stitches are moving three stitches every round to the right. So you're knitting from right to left, you're knitting right to left, but the stitches are moving left to right, okay? So let me grab the other end here. And that's why it takes a little patience to get the yarn lined up where you need it to be. Now, some people, to get the yarn lined up to where you need it to be so that you can start working your heel. Now, I've seen some people cut the yarn. Okay, so here I am, I'm back at my white. I'm going to drop the gray, slip the white, and you can see that white stitch is just a little bit floppy. It's the gentlest of tugs. And again, I'm going to keep going around. And that is basically it. This is helical knitting. And again, I've just moved three more stitches to the right and then three more to the right and three more to the right. So it's getting your, the trick to this, once you start working your heel, is to get the yarn, the color that you want your heel to be in, to be on the correct side of your work so that you can start the heel. And then once you're completed with the heel, then you're going to knit around and pick up the other color and continue. Okay, so what I noticed when I did that is the tension here, my tension was just a little bit off and it's really off here, okay? It's just the tension. Because I had never done this before, I probably could have pulled a little bit harder or tightened up the stitches a little bit more. There is a way to tighten these from the front as well as from the back. You basically grab the strands across and start and eat, let them eat up the slack that is in these stitches and that will tighten that space. So I don't really consider that a hole, it's just a space because the stitches are loose. It's not that nothing, it's not that the stitches were picked up incorrectly. Do you understand? So that's basically it. That, this technique creates this. And there you have it. Again, once I get a better handle on this technique and picking up the stitches, getting my tension exactly right, then I will do a proper and full uh, technique right from the cast on straight through. 
So we'll start at the cast on, we'll do the leg, the heel, the heel, foot, all the way down to the toe. Okay, so just stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, I will link to a couple of the tutorials that I thought were really, really excellent in explaining the technique and showing that transition between one color and the other. I will link those in the description box down below. But to me, this is absolute magic. And when you look at the sides, let's pull this through just so I don't drop my stitches. Look at that, completely clean. There are no jogs in the color at all. Here it is on this side. Again, aside from the starting point, again, there's absolutely no jogs in the color. And yes, I will go back and drop down and fix that because it's driving me crazy. <laughs> and there you have it. Amazing. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Oh my gosh. And it, it's so much easier than you think it is. Um, as with many things in life, you, you think you look at you look at something and you think it's so incredibly complicated. Everything knitting for me is a metaphor for life. <laughs> if you haven't figured that out yet, you think that something is so much harder than it actually is, whether that's helical knitting or um, cables or whatever it is, just even sock knitting in general. And it's really, really not. It's really not that complicated. It's it's oh, my gosh, I just think it's magic. And I don't really. Um, I don't even know what I was going to say. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, absolutely love it. I will do a tutorial. Just give me a little bit of time. Like I said, I really want to get better at um, understanding the transitions for the heel. And then I will do like a full tutorial on how to knit a sock from start to finish with this technique. So bear with me. Um, as long as life doesn't get in my way. <laughs> That will be coming. Um, just looking over at my notes. Da, 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 da. Yep, so all of that said, that is my helical knitting. That is my obsession. And think about the possibilities, you guys. There's there's so many possibilities. I did this with the with the white as the background color, but the possibilities are endless. I actually just ordered a yarn. It is a gorgeous variegated pink colorway called I Love Me More by Legacy Fiber Arts. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's a new, their new Valentine's Day colorway. I just ordered that and they also have a colorway called Dry Roast, which is a brown, I don't know, it looks like coffee grounds, but not quite that dark, more of like a caramel kind of a color. It's just gorgeous. And I want to pair those two together. I love pink and brown together. Um, so I really want to pair those two together just to see what they look like. And you can also, the possibilities, again, endless, endless, endless. You can also fade with this technique, which is something else I also wanna try. So you start with whatever your contrast color is, and let's say it's white. Let's just stick with white, because that's a little easier to visualize. If you start with your white, you can then fade different colors just by changing the yarn that you're the uh, the second color that you're helically knitting with. So I have a um, mini set that's uh, it's I forget the name of the mini set, but it's honey honey honeybees honey set. It's by Marinated Yarn. I will I'll share that with you down the line. Um, but it's all it starts with a really really rich like deep gold kind of a color, and then fades down to a beautifully soft yellow. So I can do maybe 10 rounds, which would actually be 20 because it's it's 10 would be 10 of the color and 10 of the white. So I can do maybe 20 of one and then one color switch to the next and then switch to the next and switch to the next. So you'd have this gorgeous faded sock from start to finish. Can you just picture that? I'm so excited about this. I can't, I want everybody helically knitting. I really, really do. Um, it's just, it's really fun. Now, how can this be applied? As I'm sure some of you are like, oh, I've been doing that for years. You can apply this to just knitting in general, knitting a garment, not a sock. If you have indie dyed yarn, because it's hand or hand dyed, I should say, hand dyed yarn, sometimes you'll get a sweater's quantity, but two skeins or the skeins may be ever so slightly off because they're hand dyed. So if you helically knit with two strands, let's say you're do, using a red, one red may be a click deeper than the other, you can helically knit your sweater or whatever it is, your hat, whatever it is you're knitting 
alternating between the two skeins. That way you get more of a consistent flow and look to the color. But and I know a lot of people do that, but some were surprised and thought, oh, applying it to a sock. Wow, that is, oh my gosh. I don't think I've breathed in the last few minutes. <laughs> been rambling, 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 because I'm just so excited. So um, what else is going on? I've been working on a new pattern or an idea for a new pattern, and I'm actually going to be meeting with my tech editor um, today. <laughs> uh, probably by the time this video comes out, we would have already had a chat uh, for a new sock pattern. It's really, really basic, but it is a DK weight sock pattern. I've gotten so many requests in the last couple of years for a heavier weight sock than just fingering. And I thought, okay, okay, ask and you shall receive. So let me grab that. I don't know why I don't put things like next to me as opposed to in front of me. So I'm not reaching into the camera. So here is my DK weight sock. Ta-da! Can you see that? I hope the colors are translating here. Look at, can you just, can we just look at this for a second? Oh my goodness. This is the name, this yarn is by Naughty. Oh my gosh, why am I, hello. <laughs> Hold on. This is the Naughty Pine Fiber Company. That is, will that focus? There we go. Naughty Pine Fiber Company. And this colorway is Grizzlies in the Snow. And as you can see, there is no nylon in this. Um, it's okay to knit a sock with no nylon. And I'm knitting it at a slightly denser gauge. The tighter and denser the fabric, the longer or less, the, the longer it will take to wear. Um, the tighter and denser your fabric is, the hardier it is. So I am just knitting this at a slightly tighter gauge. And here it is, here we go. Let's go this way, because it's easier to see. And it has the shadow wrap short row heel. Okay, let's pull back so you can see. I love this, tuck in my end. I love this so much. This sock is so soft. This yarn is butter soft. It is so squishy. It's so wonderful. I love it so much. Kayla is the brilliant dyer. And if you remember, right back there is the advent. I had an advent from her from this past, um, for 2023. And this was actually one of the colors in the advent. I forget which day it was, but Grizzlies in the Snow was one of the color, one of the minis in her advent. And she dyed it up in the, <clears throat> excuse me, in the DK weight. I love it so much. I love this so much. I can't even begin to tell you. So I will be talking to my tech editor. Um, pattern will be coming. We don't have dates or anything yet, but a pattern will be coming. And I also want to include in the pattern how to customize the shadow wrap short row heel depending on what yarn weight you're using. So if you're using a fingering weight, which is a little bit more common, a sport, a DK, a worsted, whatever you are using, whatever weight yarn, <clears throat> I want to include instructions on how to customize this heel. And it's very, very customizable, but I think having it written may be a little bit more helpful than just in a video that you have to find or refer back to. So I would really love to incorporate that and those instructions in the pattern as well. So this is my, my new baby. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, so there will probably be a test knit call. Um, yeah, I'm gonna figure all of that out, but I promise that hope, well, I shouldn't promise, I hope the wait is not too long. Um, based on my editor's schedule, her name is Jen, and based on Jen's schedule and availability, we'll, we'll figure it all out. So, DK weight sock by Earthstones Girl with a shadow wrap short row heel will be coming to you soon. <laughs> so yay! Um, what else is happening? Um, Oh, I do have an FO to show you, so let me grab that. I'm just always looking off, checking my notes. Let me grab that, and uh, I will be right back. So, ta-da! Here they are! <laughs> Here are my, this is my FO. 
these are my <laughs> these are my fire pit mitts you all look at these and yes I made them super duper scrappy these are so comfy and cozy I can tuck my fingers in I made them long enough so that I can tuck okay you see what's happening <laughs> so I can tuck my fingers in I can push my fingers out and I love them so much they are so cozy and warm this yarn is well let's talk about the pattern these are fire pit did I bring the other pair over da, da, da. I think I did hold on yes I did so um maybe two years ago I knit a pair of these in this yarn and fell madly in love with them. This is the same yarn as my current pair, but this was a kit. This was the 21 stripe cowl. I, anyway, the, the yarn is Blue Sky Fibers. I'll link everything down below for you. And rather than, it was a hat. It was a 21 stripe hat pattern, but rather than knit the hat, because trying to get all of this under a hat can be challenging sometimes. <laughs> so I just used the yarn and I knit a pair of fingerless mitts in the fire pit. Oh, it's trying to find my face. The fire pit mitt um, pattern, but followed the striping directions for the hat. So that's why some of the stripes are a little bit large. Some of them may just be one stripe. Uh, and I followed those directions exactly. And these were my mitts. So love the pattern so much, but I wanted something with a little less structure in the color. So I just cast on another pair. I wanted something really mindless, but a little palette cleanser. And here they are. I love them so much. Here they are. And perfect segue into a book review and a little book talk. While I was knitting these, um, again, wasn't feeling the greatest <laughs> on a lot of levels. So I just got lost in a book because that's what many of us do when things feel off or unsettled. And the book that I read, I actually, I listened because I mainly or only do audiobooks, but the book was so good and I loved it so much that I actually bought the book. And here it is. So this is the book, The Little Wartime Library, and it is by Kate Thompson. And this is the book that I listen to while I knit these. Um, I love, it's a bit of, it's a good chunky book. I loved it so much um it's actually based on a true story about i'll read the, let me read the back to you london 1944 clara button is no ordinary librarian while war ra ravages the city above her clara has risked everything she holds dear to turn the bethnal green tube station into the country's only underground library down here, a secret community thrives with thousands of bunk beds, a nursery, a cafe, and a theater, offering shelter, solace, and escape from the bombs that fall upon their city. Along with her glamorous best friend and assistant, Ruby Monroe, Clara ensures the library is the breathing heart, is the beating heart of the underground. But as the war drags on, the women's determination to remain strong in the face of adversity is tested to the limits when it came when it may come at the price of keeping those closest to them alive. Historical fiction is my favorite. Set in London, usually set in London or somewhere in Europe. And if you add books to it, win-win. <laughs> so it really can't get any better. And this did not disappoint. I loved it so much. I really, really wanted to own it. And, and again, it is based on, there was a Bethnal Green library and whole community in London during the war. And I just found that completely fascinating. If I can learn while I'm enjoying the audiobook or an audiobook, I am the happiest person. The narrator's voice was lovely. The story flowed, it moved. Um, it was heart, heart wrenching and really hard and a bit graphic at times. Um, so just a word of warning if that's not your thing. Um, 
very, very graphic at times, but I really, that said, it didn't stop me from really and truly enjoying the story and, and what these people faced and dealt with. So highly recommend this one. And I had also read um, The Last Bookshop in London, which is similar, but that was above ground. This is underground. And I love that one as well. So listen to this while I knit these. And it was just really cozy and got me through a bit of a rough patch. <laughs> so um, yeah. So again, the, the beauty of knitting and books combined can do amazing things for the spirit. It really, really can. So this, again, this yarn is Blue Sky Fibers. Um, this particular, it's a bit of a hodgepodge. So it's gray. I think it's Storm is the name of the gray. I'll, I'll link everything down below for you. And then these colors were part of a mini bundle that Blue Sky had done. I think it's Earth or warm was the name of the bundle. Again, it'll all be down in the description box for you. And I really didn't think about it. I just knit them. And whatever color I reached into the bag and grabbed, I knit with. And when I got a little tired of it, I just changed color. So there you have it. Fire pit mitts. Wonderful, wonderful beginner hand warmer pattern. If you're looking for something super duper simple, Everything is perfectly spelled out. It's a very clearly well-written pattern. It is by Taylor Earle, who is, she, her yarn company is Fiber for People. And she also has a podcast called Wool, called Wool Needles Hands. So that is the name of her um, podcast here on YouTube. It's an amazing channel. She does so many incredible things. Um, she does book reviews, she does um, technical, a lot of technical videos and questions that she covers that a lot of knitters have. It's just, it's a really great channel, so go and check it out. Um, so here we go, so that is my FO. Um, I think that's, we talked about the book. Let me just turn my page here. And, oh, okay. So the last thing I wanna talk about is, um, that's the last thing I want to talk about. The last thing I want to talk about is the idea that I have for a cowl, for a knit along. And I was thinking of doing a book sock knit along. Someone posted that in the comments. They, they left a comment and said, wouldn't it be fun to do one or can I do one? And I just thought, you know what? I think they're right. I think it would be wonderful to do a book themed cal. I don't really have any details yet, so that I'm reaching out to you all for ideas. Let me know in the comments what you would be interested in. What would you like to see? Um, I'm thinking roughly, this is a rough idea, and this may also be a collaboration. Um, a friend of mine who is also a podcaster, I don't want to put her name out there yet just in case, um, but she was thinking, she loved the idea and was thinking about possibly doing that over on her channel. Um, she also has a Patreon, so she might be doing something there as well. So she and I are still ironing out details, but I just wanted to put the idea here uh, out to you all here on the channel. So I'm thinking relatively informal, um, not a tremendous amount of rules. Um, we pick a book or you can pick your book. Either you can either knit a book that I've recommended, read a book that I've recommended, um, and then or pick a book of your own and then pair it with either a colorway or pattern or colorway and pattern that, or even knitting the sock in a particular setting that just reminds you of the book. The goal I think is to tie the yarn and the sock into the book somehow. And I couldn't think of a better, even though these are mittens, but I couldn't think of a better combination um, because I wanted something cozy and I'm holding the book at the same time. So this kind of worked, but I could have also paired it with the sock because when you're going, now this took place in the tube station or in, in the tube in London, which is what they call their subway system. And the depth that they were underground is just mind blowing to me because I am very claustrophobic, but so there's something even about the sock, the spiraling 
um, and knit the downward knitting because I'm, I'm knitting from the top down, the downward spiraling of this sock pattern tied in so well to where they were in the book, like the location of the people, the characters in the book. So something like that. I think you see where, where I'm going with this. So I think it would be really fun to do that. And it's something that you kind of do for yourself. You can leave comments and let me know, keep me up to date on your progress. Um, I'm tempted because I'd love to see what everybody's doing. And that's really hard to do in the comments here on, um, here on Instagram. I think it would be really fun to, I think it would be fun to sort of reactivate my Ravelry group um, so that we could see and share our progress there for those of you that are on Ravelry. So it, this is all sort of ideas right now. So let me know what you all think um, in the comments and we will work it out together. I'm thinking maybe middle of February, middle to end of February, and maybe we'll run March and April. That might be good, sort of end of winter, beginning of spring. So let me know what you all think. Um, I am going to, um, oh, and then prizes. There would be prizes. There are two really amazing new sock books coming out. Uh, I'll talk about those in another episode, but really fantastic sock books that are coming out. So I, if we run for two months, I might give away one copy each as a prize. Um, one copy for each month of the Cal. So that is a possibility just to keep it really simple. It's more just to in, for us to knit together and read together. And I just think that would be really fun. So let me know what you think. Um, and I think I'm at the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Uh, I loved chatting with you and catching up with you today. I am so excited about these projects and helical knitting and all this fun stuff. So <sighs> Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all again really, really soon. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today.